Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the DJI Goggles Race Edition. So this is the new version of the Goggles DJI announced and released a couple of weeks ago. We're also going to be taking a look at the DJI OcuSync A system that is specifically designed to work with the DJI Goggles. Now there is a lot to talk about in these two systems and I'm not going to get it in one video. So the plan is to do a number of videos to talk first of all about the Goggles the A system and then later on I will be doing some tutorials and how to's on what flight controllers you can connect it to, how you do it and more information like that. Now for those of you who don't fully know, DJI released an updated version of the goggles called the Race Edition which have some new updates and improvements that most people will be very happy with. But at the same time they released this OcuSync system and basically it means you can use DJI's digital OcuSync system on any aircraft you want. So whether that be a race quad or whether that be an FPV wing or something like that. Now whilst that might sound a little bit like Lightbridge or Lightbridge 2, it is similar. However, there are some big differences because this system allows you to use it with your existing radio system and it works with the DJI goggles wirelessly unlike Lightbridge 2. So in this first video, we're going to be looking at the goggles. I'm going to talk you through the differences and then as time goes on I release more videos about everything else. So let's get started. Okay, so looking at the new DJI goggles themselves, as you can see from the box, the first big change is that they are now this gunmetal black stroke grey colour, and we'll open the box in a minute and have a look. So what are the big differences between the new DJI goggles and the old ones? Well, they are still dual 1080p screens, they still work wirelessly with the Mavic Pro, they still have HDMI input. The big, big first change is it now has a fully analog FPV 5.8 gigahertz receiver built in. So yes, you can use them with any traditional FPV transmitter on 5.8 gigahertz. It supports all the usual channels, including race band. So you can now use the DJI goggles with your normal FPV aircraft. The other changes are they have redesigned the internal antennas. They have added a new 5 gigahertz uh, OcuSync mode, which isn't for the Mavic Pro. That only works for the OcuSync Air system, and I'll come on to that in the other video. Um, they have redesigned the headband ever so slightly. It now supports a lot more viewing of video and picture files and they have adjusted the communication band slightly to allow it to have less latency when used with the OcuSync system as well. So let's get inside and have a look. Okay, so I've opened the box and you can see the first big change, as I said earlier, is the colour. They're now this lovely, sort of silverly grey metallic colour. Reminds me of gunmetal, really, and it really does make the goggles look very, very nice. Now, when you look over them, they look virtually identical to the original set of goggles. However, apart from this here, and this is the SMA, or I should say RP SMA antenna slot for when you are using the 5.8 analog. Other than that, they have tweaked the design slightly in the head mask area, but overall, the main design is exactly the same. So you still have your speaker on this side of the goggles down here. You have the flap, which has the HDMI slot, it has the SD card slot, and you have a headphone jack, which also has a second feature as well which I'll come on to later. On the other side, you still have the power button, which shows you the charge on the goggles, and you have the touch pad there that allows you to control the goggles and move them around. And as I move around to the bottom, you can see that you have the enter button, function button, and the back button, and you have the knob for adjusting the goggles to suit your eyesight. Now, with the race edition, the focus fixers that, that were manufactured for the first edition of the goggles by a third party company do still work with the race edition as well. So if you are someone that needs to wear readers or something like that, the race edition is still fully compatible with that feature. Other than that, the size and the weight of the main goggle headset is exactly the same as it was on the original first version. Removing 
top of the box, you can now see the headband. Now, one of the instant noticeable things is the cover on the foam. DJI have replaced the foam covering with a new red leather, and it looks extremely nice when you look at it. It stands out very, very sharply when you look at it. Now, they say they've also redesigned the headband ever so slightly. That's this area around here. So that area there has a better fit on it. So the headband should suit more people a little bit more. It's exactly the same design as the one on the last one. So you have the antenna connections up on the top up here. You have the micro USB port for charging and updating the firmware located there. And you still have the adjustment on the band there and it still uses that same method of adjusting. So if I do it out, you can see that you still have the same stainless steel band on it as you did before. Just like the last version of the goggles, it still has the battery located in the back of the band here as well. So you still have that battery over the back end to allow you to balance the goggles nicely above your head. Moving further into the box, you are then left with a few other things. You have your manual, as you had before, sitting in the bottom. And then when we open the box, inside here you have a power supply for charging the goggles. But just like the last goggles, they charge off micro USB. So you can use any decent micro USB charger to charge the goggles. You then have the HDMI converter cable from the micro HDMI up to standard. And then in the bag, which I opened earlier just to have a look, you have a nice cleaning cloth, which again for cleaning the lenses, you have the USB cable for charging and updating the firmware, a clip for holding the cable, and the other two things is the two analog FPV antennas. Now, as I said earlier, DJI have chosen to use RPSMA connectors on this. So whilst it's not a typical connector, it is a normal connector that you can get an adapter for, and they do include an adapter in the box for the antenna if you want to use extensions. But what it also means is with an adapter, you can use any normal FPV 5.8 gigahertz antenna on the goggles. DJI do provide two in the box, but you can also use something else if you already have them. You would just need to use an adapter though. So that's what you get in the box. Okay, assembling the goggles is just like it was on the original set. What you have is your headband with the battery located on the back and the adjustment, and you have then your connectors with the two antenna ports on the top there, and then you have the slot in the top of the goggles here, which the antenna band goes into. So to assemble, you simply take the goggles, push it in until it clicks, and then that is the goggles all put together. The antenna they provide for analog FPV is as simple as take the antenna, and screw it in to the top into the reverse RP SMA connector and it's attached like that. Plastic. They do have this bendable coax in the middle but it, you can straighten it out as well and overall the quality of them is really really nice. Okay, going over the changes. As I said earlier, there are some changes to the goggles that I will go into now in a little bit more detail. As I said, first of all, DJI have added the analog 5 gigahertz support, and it does support all of the usual channels. Um, they have redesigned the antenna system as well, so it performs a little bit better. You can still use it with all of the same DJI aircraft, so you can use it wirelessly with the Mavic Pro via OcuSync, then via USB port on the DJI Spark, the Inspire 2 and the Phantom 4 series. It also still has the HDMI input, which means you can still use it with any source that outputs HDMI up to 1080p 60 frames a second. So whether that be a TV or anything else. One of the really cool features is it also supports the new panoramic modes that are on the Mavic and the Spark, which means if you do take a panoramic picture, you can upload that to the goggles and use the head tracking that is built into the goggles to look around and give you that immersive 360 view. 
The head tracking is exactly the same as it was on the other version of the goggles as well. So you still have all of those features. The software is very similar to what it was before, although DJI have adjusted it slightly and they've added some new menus and I will go over them a little bit later in the video. Just like on the last set of goggles to turn them on, it is as simple as pressing and holding the button on the side of the goggles and it turns them on just like any DJI aircraft. Again, you still have the same adjustable headband and then it allows you to flip it up into that position there when you want to put it above your head. Now, I did say earlier that DJI have adjusted the headband slightly to make it more comfortable. Now, I've been testing these for about a couple of days now and there are two things I have noticed. They do fit me better than the original set of goggles. They actually sit better on my face. I used to find I had to keep the headband a little bit up the back of my head to get the goggles to sit in tight against my face. I no longer have to do that on this version of the goggles. The second thing I have noticed is that they do not fog as much as the last set of goggles. Now that could be specific to me, but I have seen a few other reports of that as well, that the, the race edition of the goggles do not fog as badly as well and that's down to the changes they've made to the face mask. For those who haven't used the goggles before, controlling them and controlling the menus is really easy. As I said, on the side here you have a touchpad and this allows you to control the menus and it's just like a touchpad on your laptop so you can move forward, back, left and right and then underneath the goggles on the bottom you have a function key and a back button and you use them to select to go into the menu and you also use them to come back out to the previous part. So overall control is really simple. To swap between analog and digital and OcuSync, that is all done within the menu system. There is no external switches on the goggles and nothing like that. All controls for the goggles are handled internally via the menu. Okay, so now we are going to walk through the menu. So I'm gonna turn the goggles on And as you can see, it will go straight to the main landing page. Now I have already bound this to my Mavic Pro. So if I turn on my Mavic, it will then connect to the aircraft and bring up all of the options that you get when you are using it with the DJI OcuSync signal. As we can see now it's connected and it's brought up the live view format settings mode options. Now if you're not aware, when using this with OcuSync it has a number of menu options depending on what mode you select. So when you select smooth mode it will override the Mavic Pro's aircraft settings to use 1080p 60 frames a second. You cannot record on the Mavic's SD card at any higher than this resolution when in smooth mode. In HD mode you are still have the ability to use 4K and in normal mode the goggles will never override the aircraft settings. But it is worth noting that if you select smooth mode and you are recording in 4K it will stop the recording and switch to 720, 1080p 60 frames a second on the aircraft and 720p on the goggles so once you've saved your settings I can go to normal mode for this and click confirm and then you can see we are on the main landing page if we look across to the right we have the option for the camera settings and we can go through the stills record and the camera settings because I haven't actually got a SD card in the craft I can't actually show you the settings themselves but it gives you all of the usual ones Above that is the menu, and this gives you all of the settings for the goggles. So you've then got the settings menu, and this gives you the eco mode for the power, the link settings, the brightness settings, the volume settings, the head tracking settings. So for instance, on the head tracking, it allows you to set the sensitivity and how it will react when you move your head. And then you've got the IMU calibration to calibrate the sensors in the goggles. And finally, you've got reset all. Moving over to take off, you can automatically take off the aircraft like the Mavic or the Spark via the goggles without using the controller. You've then got the option to select HDMI input, so if you're using an external source, you can then play back via the play-in 
what you've recorded on the internal SD card and then you've got those HD Live View settings again so you can go back in and change that mode. For more information on this I would suggest you read the manual because that option is a little bit complicated if you haven't got your head around it or please go and view my original DJI goggles video where I explain that in more detail. Moving over then to the other menu which is giving you all of the options for controlling the gimbal and the main features so you've got the screen mode which will enter the goggles into full screen and take away the OSD and then you press the back button to come back out of that you've then got the head tracking flight option so what that means is when you use that if you move your head left or right in flight it will yaw the aircraft and then you've got head tracking gimbal which means it will only move the gimbal and not the aircraft craft itself and then you've got reset motion control and that will set the direction you're pointing as the set center point that you were at originally now i'm just going to turn my mavic off because the fan has kicked in down the bottom here you have portrait and landscape switch which switches the goggles between the two positions and then you've also got the option for gimbal forward down so it allows you to quickly adjust the gimbal to either look forward or look down on the aircraft. The next two options are the new ones now this is racing drone analog and racing drone digital. Racing drone analog is your analog FPV for 5.8 gigahertz and racing drone digital is where you go into the digital system for the new OcuSync A end. Now I'm not going to talk about that in this video but I will go over that in my next one. So to go into the analog you'd go into racing drone analog and then it will take you into the main analog screen. As you can see when you enter the analog you have a number of options. We have the frequency settings, the zoom scale settings, brightness, contrast and saturation. Now the last three are the basics of what you have on any set of goggles so saturation, contrast and brightness. You have the zoom scale setting which I'll come on to in a minute and the frequency. To select the channel you want to use with your FPV you have two options. You have all Auto and manual. In manual you can manually select the frequency and then hit confirm and it will go to the one you have set your transmitter to. In auto if you click on auto it will automatically search the whole FPV band and find you the channel you're looking for. If it's found someone else's you could hit continue or if it's found the one you want you can hit complete. If I hit complete on that that has now connected to my FPV signal that is coming off my Bixler 3 and as you can see you've got the OSD menu from my Eagle Tree Vector and you can see the FPV signal under the cupboard there. Sorry it's not a very good picture. If I go back into the menu, you've then got the zoom scale setting and this sets how big the image is on the screen. So if I adjust it, you can see that the image gets larger as I make it bigger and then smaller as I make it smaller. As it's a 4 by 3 image, it won't fully show over the whole of the 16 by 9 screen, but it will show you up to the maximum size. So that is a really nice feature as well. Other than that, that is all the settings you have in the analog section and then you would go down to exit, hit OK, hit OK and then that goes back to the main goggles menu. Next, I wanted to talk about latency. DJI state when using the goggles with the OcuSync Air system that they've managed to get it down to approximately 50 milliseconds uh, minimum. When used with the Mavic Pro though, it would still stand at the 110 milliseconds they said before. And when used in analog, the latency should be at an absolute minimum. Next, I wanted to talk about attaching your radio. Now, when used with the OcuSync Air system, you are able to connect your radio directly to the DJI goggles. Now that is a non-standard radio. You can connect a non-DJI. And the idea of that is as follows. The OcuSync signal is both a digital video and control link in one. So that is on either five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if you were also using your standard radio, like I've got my Tyrannis here, which is on 2.4. If I was using that and I was using the goggles on 2.4, the two would interfere fear and the chances are that the Tyrannis would lose and the OcuSync would win because of the high definition video stream. So to get around this what DJI have done is allowed the ability to hook up your radio 
to the DJI goggles via the trainer port on the radio into the headphone jack on the side. And in the box they have included a couple of cables for different radios and I'll, in the specs for the goggles it says to you what radios are compatible but you can then hook it up via the trainer port on the back and into this headphone socket on the goggles and then when used in combination with the OcuSync ear system it means you can control your aircraft fully over the OcuSync system without using the radio system on your separate radio. The next thing I wanted to talk about, and it isn't something I've mentioned until now, is DVR recording. One of the features DJI have added to the DJI Goggles Race Edition is the option to record the digital OcuSync signal onto the SD card on the goggles. Now, it doesn't let you record the analog system, as far as I can tell at the moment, but you can record the digital OcuSync system. So it means you are able to play back your video not only on the air aircraft but you can also record the goggles version as well so that is a really nice addition they've added onto the goggles too overall the spec of the goggles hasn't changed it's only been improved so they have still got the 1080p dual screens you still have all of the head tracking features when used with aircraft like the mavic pro you still have the battery which is approximately 1000 milliamp in the back you can still charge it via usb you still have all of those usual features what they've done on top of that is added the analog fpv the improved ocusync signal with the lower latency the new color the slightly redesigned headband and the ability to add your standard controller via the port on the side overall the dji goggles especially the race edition are gonna be i think a bit of a winner for dji because what it means now is whereas they were only really designed for dji products now it opens the floodgates and means you can use them with anything you want. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've been able to find something of interest in there. I hope there's been some information that may have helped you and I will be doing the next part of this video where I will be looking at the OcuSync Air system very very soon. Thank you very much.